Okay, today I want to talk about CSS counters. Now, CSS counters are a way that you can dynamically, through CSS, add numbers to your content. But the numbers are there for decorative purposes. Um, I have a few examples on the page, and I'm going to show you how that you can add the numbers and how you can also use CSS counters to count the number of elements that are in a certain state on your page. I have here at the top a dictionary list with the terms and descriptions. We have the DTs and the DTs all the way down here. And what I'm doing is I'm applying a number in front of each one of these. Now, we can always use an OL, an ordered list, with list items. And you can wrap those LI tags around any piece of content that you want on the page. So, if the numbers are part of the semantics and they have to be there on the page, then definitely do that. Add the extra HTML, the OL and the LI, LI around each one of the elements that have to be numbered, and you will get that numbering. But if you want to take something that's not normally numbered and just apply numbers for a visual reason, here, I wanted to number the terms to go along with the descriptions. We can do that with CSS counters. In the second one, what I've done here is I've simulated adding footnotes, and we've got some superscript tags put in here and here. Nothing inside of them, but you can see I've got the numbers showing up, and then these numbers will relate back to my ordered list, which I'm actually using down here at the bottom. Now, there is no connection between the superscript and this number. It's just I've added this so I don't have to go through and have to renumber these things. When I'm done this, then I can go back and make sure that these numbers line up with these numbers. But I can add additional superscripts. So if I was to go into, say, here, right after the... Uh, well, let's not do right there. Let's do after this one. If I were to add a superscript tag here, and see, it automatically renumbered. The number 2 went in here, and the 3, this 2 became a 3. I still have to come in here and add the additional footnote, but I can target these, I can style these, and the numbering I don't have to worry about through here. Uh, the bottom example is, I've got 2 at the bottom here for actually counting things. So this line is going to count the number of elements that I have selected here. So. If I click on pizza and burgers, there we go. I've got those two things selected, and it counts, and you can remove it. And we're using CSS counters to do this, not JavaScript. Forms, filling them out. As I add text, there's one. Add another one. Well, it doesn't count it because it's not valid, because it's an email field. So this at this.com. There we go. Now I've got two fields filled out. Uh, what I'm going to do with you here is I'm going to show you how I can select these things and count the number of ones that I've got selected. And all I'm doing to select them is this little bit of JavaScript at the bottom where I'm finding these three divs and when I click on them I'm toggling the CSS class active on these three divs. So as I move back and forth and see if I click on any one of them I'm just toggling the class active and all that is doing is adding a gold background changing the background color from gray to gold that's all we're doing but through CSS with the counters we can actually count how many of these elements so let's take a look and see how this works if we look at the first one with the DLs and the DTs we have at the DL level so let's scroll back up to the top here at the DL level which is the container around all of these things we're using counter reset. This is to create the name right here, term, and there is an optional one here, zero. This is the default value, so this or the starting point for your counter. I'm going to start at zero and go up from there. One, two, three. So one was added, one was added, one was added as it went up. My DTs. These are the things that I'm going to count. I'm using the counter increment, and I'm saying the counter called term, which is the one that I defined up here, incremented by 1. Now, 0 and 1, these are the default values. If I left them off, I get the exact same result. I just wanted to show that you can actually put something in here. So if I say starter value is 3, if 
4, 5, and 6 are the values. I want to go up by 3. 6, 9, 12. There we go. Start at 3, and each dt I'm adding 3 to it. Now the last part of this, so we've got counter reset, counter increment. The third part is the content. So if you are using, actually this is a pseudo element, I should have the two colons here. If you are using a before or after pseudo element, so you're dynamically creating the content, you need to have a content property inside of the before style once you have that content, you can put anything you want. I can write a piece of text to go inside of here. Actually, this needs to be wrapped in quotation marks. There we go. So there is a piece of text placed inside of each one of these. And very often, that's what you're going to be doing with content. You're adding a little icon or something like that. Uh, there's a URL property that you can use to pick an image. Instead of using URL or a piece of text. Here I'm adding a space, and that's what's creating the space between the number and the word term. Without this, there is no space. There you go. You can see that it is pressed together. Counter is another one of these keywords. This is a method in CSS that allows you to access a counter by the name. So term is the name of the counter that I'm accessing. I'm getting its value, and I'm putting its value as the content. So the pseudo element being created before each one of the DTs, so in front of the word term, is going to get the value, the current value of this, and place it inside of here. There we go, that's it. Same things happened here with the section that is wrapped around here. And I'm using counter reset to create a new counter. I'm calling it note. I'm incrementing note on each one of the superscript elements. So the one, two, three in red. I'm incrementing that and then I'm writing out the value with a space in front of it just to create a little bit more space right here. Uh, this is just styling of the text. So counter reset, counter increment, content using the counter method. That's all you need to do this if you're just going to put decorative numbers. Now if I'm going to count something, the counting is actually something that's being attached to the state. You'll see up here that I'm putting the counter increment and the content together in the same element, in the same element. So inside the same style, I'm doing that. If I split those apart, so down here, looking at the checkboxes, looking at the fields, for the checkboxes, I'm creating a counter called food. And then I'm saying, hey, any inputs that you have which are checked, increment the food counter. For these text fields, I'm using input type equals text is valid or input type equals email is valid. I could have just said input, but I didn't want to uh, count any other fields. I wanted to specifically target the two different ones. If it's valid, meaning if this has something in it that matches what the HTML says is required, if I look at my HTML down here, we're saying that they are required. Because they're required, they're no, not valid until they actually have a valid value put inside them. For text, it's anything, any text whatsoever. For email, it has to be a valid email address. It matches a pattern. If you added a pattern attribute here, then this would not be valid until the pattern is matched. But we are here counting them because we're using the checked and the valid attributes as part of our CSS in order to increment. So we're only incrementing, doing counter increment, if it's checked or if they are valid. And that's it, that's the only difference. Now, one other thing that I did down here, just to show that you could add, um, there are a few keywords that you can use here. I used open quote and close quote around the value. So these quotation marks that you see right here are actually being generated by the CSS as well. Uh, and these will be uh, localized. So whatever the valid quotation mark is will be applied here. 
All right, our last example with these divs that we're toggling with the active class. So my JavaScript, all it's doing is adding and removing the CSS class active to the divs that have the class selectable. So there's three of them that have the class selectable, and we're adding and removing the class active. So let's take a look at what we can do up inside the CSS. So I have here, I have here the divs, selectable, this. Okay, so I'm going to up inside of divs, because that's the container that wraps the three of them here. Inside of this, I'm going to create a new counter. So counter reset, let's call it divs. Then I have to decide when I want to increment it. Well, I'm going to increment it only when the class active has been applied. So this class right here, selectable active, when I have an element that has both those things, that's when I'm changing it to goldenrod, and that's when I'm going to increment. So the one called divs is the one that I'm going to increment. And then I want to write down here, output after, this is where I want to display it. So content is going to be, you can see here's the various keywords that we get. We want the counter method, and I want to display the one called divs. There, already, it shows up as one, two, three. So as you add and remove, now I'm not creating a variable, I'm not using JavaScript to do this, I'm not saving this value anywhere. All I'm doing is I am providing some visual feedback to the user, and that's the important distinction here. If you need to actually track that number and save it somewhere, do that through JavaScript. But if it's just a visual reference to the person to let them know, hey, you know, you've been scrolling through this list and you have selected 14 things. If you only care about telling them how many things, CSS counters is a, a quick and easy way that you can implement that without any JavaScript at all. All right, I hope that's helped. I'm going to uh, put this file up as a CSS uh, or as a code gist and put that in the comments. If you have any questions, Please leave them in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching.